I'm going to start this month with a public service announcement. Check out my t-shirt. New York City Math Team 2002. You know what that 2002 means? It means this shirt is old. Old t-shirt. I'm getting down to the bottom of the barrel on my t-shirts. I'm almost out. And I'm going to have to do my laundry. I'm almost out because you're not sending me any t-shirts. I asked you to hook me up. You got to send me your Math Counts Team t-shirt, your school t-shirt. I'll make you all famous. Won't have to do my laundry and everybody will be happy. Now, to the math. Last month I asked you students to pick the problems for me. That was a mistake. You guys gave me this ridiculously long problem. Really hard. I kind of got stuck in the middle of it. Uh, so this month I got a little smarter. I asked the teachers because, you know, the teachers are nicer. And here's what the teachers gave me. It gave me this pretty little poster. You know, pretty Math Counts poster. Even has on here that you can win a trip to Disney World. You can go to Nationals. And I know you want to go to Disney World because you'll get to meet me in person. What? No? You don't want to go to Disney World to see me in person. You want to go to see Mickey Mouse. You'd rather see Mickey Mouse than see me. That's cold. That's really cold. Oh, let's do some math here. We'll look at the problem. Let's see. We got alligator. Alligator. Alligator launches oranges one at a time at two buoys in her pond. If she hits the left buoy, wait a second. My left, your right. Left buoy, she earns two points, and if she hits the right buoy, she earns one point, and if she misses them both, she earns zero points. So if she launches, the question is, if she launches all four of her oranges, how many scoring sequences can result in a total of four points? Now, the strategy we're going to start with here, and it's the strategy I usually use on counting problems, but I'm not exactly sure what to do in the beginning, is what I call constructive counting. I try to construct one example of whatever it is I'm trying to count. Now the reason we really like doing constructive counting on this problem is that I get to throw some oranges. So oranges, need some buoys. Let's see, we got buoys here. Let's see, left buoy, two points. Right buoy, one point. Here we go. And see how I can throw a sequence of throws and get four points. So this is gonna be easy. Let's go. Uh huh. That was pretty lame. Let's try that again. Uh, uh, uh. All right. Uh, it may look like I'm really bad at, at, at throwing things, but I know something you don't know. I am not left-handed. I also have bigger oranges. All right, let's try this again. All right, I need to get the four points. I need two two-pointers. That's one. That's one. Set that buoy back up. All right, need one more, one more. Here we go, we're gonna do this backhand. Four points for me, four points. So I got two zeros and then two twos. So that's one way that I can get four points. But you know, it's not only zero, zero, two, two. I could have gone two, zero, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two. Hmm, well we could sit here and set them all up and just watch me throw oranges all day, but That'll take forever, and we, we, we took forever last month, so we're going to go a little bit faster this time. So we know that if we go 2, 2, and 0, and 0, I'll end up with, we'll end up with 4 points. So we're going to try to count the number of different ways we can go 2, 2, 0, 0. Now, if you're really experienced with counting, you know that what we're trying to do here is we're starting with 4 blanks, and we're going to choose 2 out of these 4 to stick 2s in, and then the other 2 are going to get 0, so you might just... Write it as 4, choose 2, which is 6. But maybe you've never seen this symbol before and you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's okay. Because we can also take an organized casework approach to counting the number of ways we can have two twos and two zeros. We might start with a 2, and then we have three blanks left, and we can put a 2 in any one of those. So there are three ways I can end up with a 2 first and have two twos and two zeros. Or I might go a 0 and then a 2, and then there are two blanks for the second 2 where I could go 0, 0, 2 in a blank. And sure enough, there are six ways I can fill out to have two twos and two zeros. So I have six ways for this case. But of course, this isn't the only way we can end up with four points. And if I have two twos, I, I definitely have to have zeros the rest of the way. I also could have just had one two. Now, if I only have one two, then I need to get ones in two other positions, and then zero in the last one. Now this turns out as a little bit easier to count than this case, because here, all I have to do is I say there are 
four different places. I can put the two. And then there are three remaining places. Once I've picked which one of my four throws is going to get two points, I have three remaining places to put the zero. And that's it. The ones go in the other two places. So four times three is 12. Now, is it possible for me to get four points without ever throwing a two? Yes, it is. One, 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 one. There's only one way to do that. So 6 plus 12 plus 1, and the answer is 19. We knocked that one off with some nice organized casework, and it didn't take 20 minutes. So I'll have to thank the teachers. I'll have to give them their poster back. Maybe I'll just hang this on my wall. This is a nice, this is a nice poster. Oh, what's up with that? That's not funny. It's another problem. What are we doing here? All right, we got another problem here. While walking in the woods behind the cow, you can turn your head. You can turn your head. You can pick your monitor up, turn it this way, and you can read the problem there. Let's see. While walking in the woods behind the castle, Prella and Bodo. Who comes up with these names? Prella and Bodo find a treasure map. First, the map says walk 600 meters due west to find your next clue and then walk 1,000 meters due north and 300 meters due east and 600 meters due south and you find, you got all that? Um, let's draw a picture. We're never going to remember all this stuff and just figure it out in our heads. So here we go. Got a nice visual problem. Draw a picture. Don't just sit there and read it over and over. So here we go. Walk. Turn the monitor. There you go. Walk 600 meters due west. All right. 600 meters due west. Here's where we started. And this is 600. 600 meters due west. After walking 600 meters, walk 1,000 meters due north. We're going to go up. Not quite a straight line, but it'll do. 1,000. 1,000, and then 300 meters due east. So we're going to come back this way, about 300. Following the directions, following, following directions, always a good idea. Final set of instructions, walk 600 meters due south. 600 meters, this better be a good treasure. 600 meters due south, and we have our treasure. And we want to know, ha, huh, Upon reading this, they run as fast as they can to find the treasure in the exact spot. Final clue it describes. So instead of doing all this big circle, they just take the shortcut and they run just like that. And the question is, is how far? I guess it's how far to X marks the spot do we get the treasure? Let's see. Well, we can build a nice little right triangle here. And instead of uh, figuring out all this other random stuff make a nice little right triangle. We see that, well, we went 600 meters west, 300 meters back east, so this is just 300 meters to the west. And see, we went up 1,000, down 600. That means we only went 400 up. So we have a right triangle with legs of 300 and 400. So you know our 3, 4, 5 right triangles, or we use the Pythagorean theorem. And we find out that we are 500 meters from the treasure. Fortunately, I was kind of mean of them to slip in the extra problem, but fortunately this is a pretty easy problem. And I, I confess I've seen this problem before because, well, this poster was, was in something they mailed out to all the alumni of the program, you know, the people who did math counts back in the day. And, well, as you saw, this problem is a lot easier than the first problem we did. Uh, and the first problem they, that we did was a problem that was meant for students. This one's meant for us old folk alums. So I guess this just means uh, that we old folk get... Uh, get dumber as we get older, but I suppose you students already, already knew that.